Stop leeching off dad who earns $9,000 a month. Harper, my husband's stepdaughter, blurted out. Ah. You got dumped by dad. I'm going to dad's place. Harper's dad, who disappeared, left me with the bill for her expensive middle school tuition. You don't know anything. Your dad's a liar. What? That makes no sense. This is why it's exhausting to talk to dumb people. Can you just shut up? You lying old hag. I didn't stop Harper as she left the house, looking pleased. She should see the truth for herself. My name is Sophia. I turned 30 this year. Right now, I'm at my middle school reunion. I don't usually dress up, so I went shopping at a department store for this day. Following the clerk's suggestions, I ended up buying clothes and a bag from brands I hardly knew. It was an unexpectedly big expense, but I'm satisfied with the nice things I got. Being single must be nice, with all that freedom. You see this dress? I got it on sale for $29. Exactly. You want to spend your money on your kids. Sophia, did you come here looking for a boyfriend? Most of my classmates are already married with children. It's a bit of a rural area around here, so people marry early. Some already have middle school-aged kids at 30. I couldn't really keep up with all the talk about kids and husbands. Hey, aren't you Sophia? Tired of smiling, I was in a corner of the venue when a man approached me. It's me, Kenneth. Kenneth? I didn't recognize the name. Yeah, I was in the soccer team. We were in the same class too. No way, you don't remember? That hurts. Then, after hearing that he was the star in the soccer team, I finally remembered. The sports ace and handsome, popular Kenneth. Sophia, you look beautiful. I shouldn't say it out loud, but among everyone here, you're the most attractive woman. That reunion was the start my relationship with Kenneth. About a month into our relationship, Kenneth suddenly confessed the truth about his background. Actually, I'm divorced and have a kid. What? It's a girl. Her name is Harper. I was shocked to hear about the divorce and his child for the first time. And he was raising the child. Kenneth, with a kind face, took my hand. Harper wants to meet you. She wants a new mom. I was confused by the sudden news, feeling my cheeks heat up. Harper is in the sixth grade, 11 years old. Would she welcome her father's girlfriend? Honestly, it's a difficult age. The following Sunday, I met Harper, feeling anxious. Hello. I'm Harper. Dad always talks about you. Nice to meet you. Harper, young but mature, greeted me politely. I'm glad mom seems kind. Harper murmured in a low voice and was relieved. I'm glad you seem kind. I'd be happy if you became my real mom. Dad really likes you. He's always bragging about you at home. Hey, Harper. What are you saying? That's embarrassing, right? He's totally smitten. Their endearing exchange made me smile. With Kenneth and Harper, I could build a home that was always happy and smiling. Maybe I was blinded by the joy of a new love. With Harper's encouragement, we got married. It was Kenneth's second marriage, so there was no wedding ceremony. I still felt a little longing for a wedding dress, but it couldn't be helped. We just registered our marriage and I moved into Kenneth's house. What happened here? Kenneth's house was a mess, like it had been robbed. When I visited before, it wasn't perfectly clean, but it was somewhat tidy. But I had only seen the living room, maybe the mess and trash were just hidden in other rooms. My lovely wife, this is your chance to show your skills. He had been neglecting housework to dump it on me, which made me feel sick. But today was the first day of our marriage. I didn't want to fight. I'm good at tidying up. Leave it to me. Of course. Kenneth smirked with a nasty smile, showing his yellow teeth. You're a garbage collector, after all. His tone was dripping with sarcasm. I work in garbage collection. I know it's seen as dirty work by society, but Kenneth is different. I remember what he said during our dating days. 
Garbage collection is an absolutely essential job for society, isn't it? But it's not something just anyone can do, I know that. You're amazing, Sophia. He looked at me with genuine respect. That couldn't have been a lie. I want to believe that, but the Kenneth in front of me now sneered dirtily. Then, hurry up and get it cleaned. Ah, yes. This is terrible, it's awful. I want to say something, but my voice was stuck in my throat. Harper is here too. I can't just start arguing in front of the child. Hey dad, she's not moving at all. Is she defective or something? Get to work already. Defective? Well, she's a woman with 30 years of wear and tear. What? You said she was good at housework, dad. If she's defective, just throw her away. Even Harper, who used to be friendly and sweet, has changed. Laughing, the two of them treat me like a convenient tool for household chores. I feel the blood draining from my face, but realizing this on the first day of marriage was too late. Without much time to think, a month passed. I'm responsible not only for the housework, but also for taking care of Harper. You're late. I've been waiting for three minutes. If something happened to cute little me left alone on the street at night, will you take responsibility? When I go to pick her up from tutoring classes at night, complaints fly instead of thanks. She's smart enough to understand complex words but can't seem to utter a simple thank you. So disappointing. Ah, I'm tired. I have school again tomorrow. It's so stupid, there's nothing for me to learn in that low-level school. So annoying. Harper, who is good at her studies, finds her current elementary school unsatisfying. She takes tutoring classes to aim for a prestigious middle school. Around here, taking exams for middle school is rare. I don't want to go to school, but it'll affect my exams. Hey, it's annoying, so drive me in the morning too. Sorry, I can't in the morning. I don't have time. What are you even doing every morning that you're always gone? I'm working. Harper leaned forward from the back seat. What? Work is more important than me? Getting married and then putting your child second is just unacceptable. Even so, I can't just abandon my job. Living off dad's money and still acting so high and mighty? It's Harper who's being presumptuous. The most important person in this house is dad. He's our king, and I'm the princess. You're just a servant we picked up from the streets. If you defy me, servants can be easily replaced, you know. It's puzzling how a primary schooler can have such a mindset. The next day, after finishing my early morning job, I come home and start cleaning without taking a break. I manage to tidy up the kitchen, bedroom, and bathroom to some extent, but the hallway and other areas are still a mess. When will this house ever be clean? Get it done by the end of this week. Kenneth ordered me. Wearing a mask, I open another room and find it littered with clothes, snack wrappers, and a pile of pay stubs. Curious, I opened one of the stubs. Wow, a take-home of $9,000. That's a lot. Kenneth's income was more than I imagined. I had suspected he might be short on money, so knowing he has a steady income is somewhat reassuring. Actually, Kenneth has been asking me to pay various bills. It started with utilities. Then there were the mortgage payments and Harper's tutoring fees, which I've been transferring to a designated account. Of course, I'm the one who opens my wallet for daily expenses. I'm too busy, so pay it for me," Kenneth said. He usually doesn't get home until after 10 p.m. He doesn't have time to go to the bank. Apparently, managing the household finances is the wife's job. If he has money, he could at least give me some for living expenses. Even if he doesn't have time to withdraw money for living expenses, it's strange that the account where monthly payments are drawn from is empty. Just putting enough money in the account to cover expenses should be simple. I wondered if Kenneth had some peculiar fixation, but he didn't object when I suggested depositing a lump sum. Now, about these pay stubs, should I throw them away? When I checked the dates, thinking to save the recent ones, they turned out to be from 10 years ago. This is appalling. 
How long has it been since this room was cleaned? Once the floor was somewhat visible, the next task was the pile of trash bags in the corner. They were filled with a mix of all sorts of garbage, not sorted at all. Opening the bags and starting to separate the contents, I found scraps of paper among the cans and bottles. I can't believe this. There's no intention of recycling at all. Given my job, I can't stand this kind of mishandling of trash. It was difficult, but I managed to pull the scraps out of the cans. Huh? This is. I paused, holding the unfolded scraps. Trash is a mass of personal information. I want to talk to Kenneth about this paper, but it's hard to find the right moment. Speaking to him after he comes home late is pointless. Let me sleep, I'm tired. In the morning, I leave for work while Kenneth is still asleep. Two months passed like this, and it was time for Harper's middle school entrance exams. She passed. It was a testament to her hard work. Our brief moment of shared joy was cut short by Kenneth's words. So, you pay the enrollment fee, won't you? Me? The fee is $3,000. Didn't you say you'd prepare it from your savings, Kenneth? Ah, uh, I've been too busy to go to the bank. I have work now. Harper's your responsibility, Mom. Wait a minute. I grabbed Kenneth's shoulder, but he roughly shook off my hand. Shut up. I'm earning money for this family. You take care of the house, you're the mom, right? He pushed me away and quickly left the house. Stunned, I was met with Harper's mocking smile. The payment for the enrollment fee is due tomorrow, mom. I had my thoughts about Harper, but I couldn't crush her future. The payment wasn't just the enrollment fee. I needed to pay the first year's tuition too. And other expenses nearly amounted to $10,000. I knew about it, but the amount made my head spin. Moreover, Kenneth was too busy with work to even come home. Just pay it, you're the mom. He hardly answered the phone, but when he did, he ordered me as if it were a matter of course. I'm helping you and dad out. Be grateful, mom. Though it pained me to do this for such an ungrateful stepdaughter, I couldn't let her miss the opportunity to attend a good middle school. Even after the payments, Kenneth didn't return home. Between work, cleaning the house, and preparing for starting at the new school, my days were busy, and Harper soon became a middle schooler. We've been living together, just the two of us, for a while. I got transferred, and I'll be moving to live by myself. Take care of Harper. Kenneth's sudden call sounded dubious. He hung up before I could say anything. After that, no matter how many times I called back, there was no answer. With her dad gone, Harper must be feeling insecure. Strong-willed as she may be, she's still a middle schooler. But Harper looked at me with scorn. Ah, you got dumped by dad. With a smirk, Harper was unshaken. She started packing her things into a large bag and plastic bags. She carelessly stuffed a lot of clothes and school supplies, piling them up at the entrance. I'm going to dad's place. I'll spare you the trouble of driving me. Bye. Harper, do you know where dad is? Maybe. But I won't tell you. But, Harper, dad is. Her laughter faded to a serious expression. Shut up. Why did dad marry you? It's not worth it just for cleaning. Maybe to support me before the exams? It's really a mystery. Then Harper pointed at me. You've been dumped by dad. Stop leeching off dad who earns $9,000 a month. There seemed to be no point in continuing the conversation with Harper. All right, I get it. Then I want a divorce from a husband who brings home $900. Harper burst out laughing. You're really stupid, aren't you? You saw dad's pay stubs when you were cleaning, right? Can't you even count numbers? Maybe you should start over from the first grade. You don't know anything, Harper. Your dad is a liar. What? I don't get it. This is why I get tired talking to dumb people. Can you just shut up? You lying old hag. I didn't stop Harper as she happily left the house. 
she should see the truth for herself. I know calling Kenneth would be useless, so I just sent one message. Let's get a divorce. I wrote. He read the message but didn't reply. Which probably means he doesn't want to divorce. There's no reason for me to stay in a house where both my husband and stepdaughter have left. I packed my few belongings inside. The house that looked like it had been robbed was now completely tidy. I hoped that improving the messy environment would brighten Harper's heart, but it didn't work out that way. My marriage with Kenneth lasted only about half a year. Trying to change them in just six months was a reckless thought. Goodbye. Before leaving, I said a final farewell to the empty house. Then, suddenly, the front door burst open. Dad, he... Harper, who had left just several minutes before, rushed in, her eyes red. She said sobbing to me. Dad said he can't live with me, that I should live with you. It's weird, right? So strange. Why? How come? If Harper went to Kenneth, she should know the answer. I gave her that answer in words. Dad abandoned us, both you and me. No! Harper screamed but collapsed weakly in the cold entrance. I know why Kenneth isn't coming back home. It's not because he's busy with work or because he got transferred. He was with another woman, right? I was just a cash cow and a housekeeper, and his real love interest was someone else. Younger and cuter than me, I imagine Kenneth was quite elated with her. Kenneth who was careless seems to have introduced her to Harper. Even Harper, a child, must have guessed which one between the two of us was true love. Huh? How did you know? Apparently, she was instructed to keep it a secret from me. Did you think I didn't know? When I was cleaning the house, lots of traces of a woman showed up. Even the photos she printed were thrown away with the trash. They were so scattered that they just got mixed in with the garbage bags. A person who can't throw away trash or sort it properly can't keep a secret. That's disgusting. You went through the garbage bags? Because they weren't sorted. Ew, that's so gross, that's crazy. If I were to borrow Harper's words, what's really gross and crazy is Kenneth's behavior. Kenneth and Harper seemed to mock me together, but Harper didn't really know Kenneth. Before leaving the house, you wondered why Dad married someone like me, right, Harper? That's because he wanted to push you off onto me. What? Kenneth wanted to have more fun with his real girlfriend, but Harper was in the way. But he wasn't cruel enough to abandon and discard Harper. Using his good looks, he approached me and skillfully got a mom who could be used. I was foolish to be deceived so easily. Harper's mobile phone fell from her pocket and started to vibrate. It was a call from Kenneth. I picked up the phone, pressed the answer button, and turned it on speakerphone. Kenneth's cajoling voice filled the air. Harper, I'm sorry. When I said I couldn't live with you, I didn't mean to treat you like you were a burden. I wanted you to stay with mom. See, if dad's gone, mom would be lonely, right? Take pity on the poor woman. It's like, you know, volunteering. You're kind, Harper, so I'm counting on you. Hello, Harper? Are you listening? What does he mean, for my sake? He just wants to get rid of Harper because he wants to have fun with his young girlfriend, and Harper understands that now. Looking down at her, I see her clenching her fists, head hung low. I can't tell if she's crying or shaking with anger. But one thing's for sure, she's deeply shocked. I'm fine being alone. There's no need for volunteering. When Harper fell silent, I replied for her, and Kenneth let out a short yelp on the phone. You were there? Don't just answer someone else's phone. He yells immediately when things go wrong. Isn't that a trait of a stupid person? Kenneth, where are you now? I told you, I got transferred. I'm living by myself. Living by yourself, huh? In an apartment just a 10-minute walk from her house? Huh? Kenneth let out a weird sound. Thinking he could be cheating so close by and not get caught is ridiculous. How come you? 
I didn't have to follow and investigate Kenneth to find out. It's because of the trash. At the apartment's garbage dump, there was a bag with terribly bad manners. Recyclable and compostable garbage all mixed together, and cans stuffed with tissues and cigarette butts. When collecting garbage, I often saw bags like this. With different types of garbage mixed together. It was the same as the garbage left at home. It's rare these days to see such badly mannered garbage disposal. I realized right away it was Kenneth's trash. You rummage through the trash bags? That's disgusting. Crazy. Kenneth and Harper call me disgusting and crazy, but they are the craziest. I know you're living with another woman. I want a divorce. Huh? No, we don't have to divorce. Kenneth's voice suddenly became softer. He's making excuses. It's not that I dislike you, Sophia. You're necessary as Harper's mom, and I really trust you. So, don't say such sad things as divorce. He kept talking, but I hung up. Then, I pressed the doorbell of a certain apartment. No one answered even after three rings. Thinking they might be busy, I opened the front door. The door was unlocked. Wow! Sophia! Inside the room were Kenneth and the woman, as expected. What are you doing here? Kenneth shouted, spitting, but half hiding behind the woman. I had been on the phone with Kenneth while heading to the apartment. Harper, who was in a daze, was also pushed into the car and brought along. She now sat weakly at the entrance, knocking. We came. To your solo apartment. The woman with feather-like eyelashes blinked. You're Kenneth's wife? Such a plain woman. Kenneth likes this type of woman? What bad taste. You should just get divorced. Right. If he wants to play with a cute woman like you, he should just divorce plain old me quickly. Unexpectedly agreeing with me, the other woman laughed. You're kind of understanding, funny lady. Thank you. What's your name? It's Natalie. If Kenneth divorces his wife, maybe I will marry him? Harper's already a middle schooler, so she won't need to be taken care of much, and I can become her mom. What will you do, Kenneth? Natalie peeked at Kenneth, who had shrunk and hidden. Uh, well. Kenneth hesitated, so I thrust the divorce papers at him. I've already filled in my part. Now, what will you do, Kenneth? I hadn't thought of divorcing. If you prefer younger girls, just divorce me. Kenneth fell silent for a while, then asked one thing. Is Harper going to middle school properly? Of course. Then, I'll divorce. Finally, Kenneth signed the divorce papers. I quickly put the papers in my bag. Thank you. I'll file for divorce. I should be the one thanking you. Kenneth, who had been using me conveniently, said something unexpected. I didn't expect such a clean breakup. Kenneth couldn't hold back and burst into laughter. You're really stupid. You were just used and thrown away, get it? I waited silently for the next words. Kenneth started talking proudly. I really owe you one. You cleaned the house and paid for Harper. Thanks. I can say thank you as many times as you want. Thank you. Thank you. Like a mad parrot, Kenneth kept repeating thank you. Sure, sure, you're welcome. Just make sure you pay back the money I've been covering for you. What? That's ridiculous. I've kept all the receipts and records of the payments, so please take care of it. Are you kidding me? Kenneth grabbed me by the collar. I felt my throat being squeezed. Fear made my legs shake, but I tried not to let it show and spoke firmly. Don't be stingy about money, especially in front of Harper and Natalie. It's embarrassing. Kenneth's eyes were bloodshot, but his grip loosened slightly. I freed myself from Kenneth's grasp and pulled out his pay stubs from my pocket. I've seen this. Ah, oh, yeah. Kenneth responded weakly, avoiding my gaze. If he's earning $9,000, he should be more proud. And this stub is from 10 years ago. Earning so much at around 20 years old is not ordinary. 
Maybe his salary is even higher now. Kenneth, you're amazing. If you're earning this much, you can surely afford $10,000 or even $20,000. Please return my money. Well, but... Kenneth stumbled over his words. Then Natalie patted Kenneth's back. Why are you dragging this out? Just pay her and get it over with. It's annoying. But... Hey, lady. Is $10,000 okay? I have it, so I can pay you, right? Really, Natalie? Kenneth looked at Natalie as if she were a goddess. I just got my paycheck. I was saving up to buy a bag. Natalie pulled out a thick envelope. Here, $10,000. Unexpectedly, I timidly accepted the large sum of money. Thank you, Natalie, for doing this for me. Don't mention it. Kenneth gratefully said to Natalie. Return the money later, okay? The interest can be, hmm, $1,000 a day? You can pay me back in 10 days. Her light comment didn't sound like a joke. I thought Natalie was generously helping Kenneth. Kenneth, too, seemed to have thought the same and was left gaping. That much money! Kenneth turned pale and started to tremble. He seemed unable to speak, so I revealed Kenneth's secret. You don't have that much money, do you? Natalie tilted her head. I showed her the pay stub. $9,000 take-home pay. Impressive, right? But. Natalie, aware of Kenneth's supposed high salary, showed no surprise. At 20, earning this much is too incredible. When I checked, such a company didn't exist. The stub is printed on cheap copy paper, the printing is misaligned, and there are typos. It's a poor attempt at imitation. Natalie scrutinized the pay stub. When questioned, Kenneth admitted he had made it himself. I thought it would be cool to have a proper pay stub. Showing off to his wife or girlfriend at the time was neither cool nor impressive. It was spread around the room to purposefully show off to me. What a silly pretense. No way! Harper, who had been sitting unnoticed, muttered softly. Her image of a respectable father shattered. Kenneth, the so-called king of our house, was nothing of the sort. Ignoring the shocked Harper, I handed Natalie some crumpled paper. Even when the wrinkles were straightened out, it was a mess. Natalie opened it. Wow, the gap between imagination and reality is huge. Kenneth, you're unbelievable. Impossible. As soon as she opened the paper, Natalie couldn't stop laughing. She laughed so hard her face turned red. Until recently, she seemed to be considering marrying Kenneth, but she switched her attitude quickly. Harper, looking puzzled, picked up the paper Natalie had dropped. Huh? $900? What? $900? Harper counted the numbers repeatedly, but it was indeed $900. This is Kenneth's real pay stub. He's been working part-time at a distribution warehouse. The crumpled paper was hidden among cans and bottles. Kenneth's recent pay stub averaged $800 to at most $1,000. Respectable for a student part-timer, but disappointing for a 30-year-old man's income. Huh? I thought I had thrown it away properly. Kenneth finally realized his pay stub was being seen and snatched it from Harper's hands. No, this is bad. Don't look at it. Half crying, Kenneth yelled out. He looked pitifully pathetic, and my feelings for him cooled rapidly. Harper and Natalie clearly showed their disgust. What's with those looks? Were you all after my money? Am I worthless to you without money? You're all the worst. Scum. Money grubbers. You won't get a cent from me. Kenneth yelled again. I sighed naturally. It's not that you won't give, but more like you can't give, right? What's there to boast about, Kenneth, with your $900 earnings? Kenneth's mouth opened and closed as he stared in shock. Seemingly unable to argue. So the real money grubber is Kenneth, right? You married me for my money, right? I had realized early in our marriage that it was loveless, 
but being non-confrontational, I hadn't taken any action. Maybe Kenneth was just busy, I thought. Maybe if the house was clean, he and Harper would be happy and accept me as family. I had clung to these faint hopes, pretending not to notice my dissatisfaction. Looking back, I wasted my time and money. Kenneth, defiant, spilled his true feelings. Yeah, that's right. What value do you have besides money? You were flaunting your wealth at the reunion with your brand name stuff, so I decided to let you spend it for me. It's good to spend money before it rots. Kenneth cursed at me with tears in his eyes. Return the money? Don't joke with me. I married a plain, old maid like you, isn't that enough? I actually wanted to keep making you pay for longer, but the divorce was too soon. Well, since you paid the middle school entrance fee, I guess that's enough. The annual tuition is expensive too, $10,000. Without you, I couldn't have afforded it. Thanks a lot. Could there be a more offensive thank you? I hesitated to further expose his shameful behavior in front of Harper, but decided no more mercy. I revealed another of Kenneth's secrets. What nonsense are you talking about? By the way, I found this while cleaning. I showed him a bundle of letters. These are debt collection notices. I found notices from at least five companies. Harper's tutoring fees and such must have been expensive. How much did you borrow? No, that's not true. I'm paying them back. Only the interest. Kenneth was speechless. His lips trembled. In addition to the pay stubs and collection notices, there were letters from women and envelopes with forgotten money still in it, suggesting he occasionally got money from women like me. He acted wealthy but was just a leech earning $900. But, but, I'm living fine, right? I don't see the point of working hard if you can just borrow money. If this continues, you'll default and won't be able to borrow anymore. Then the government will take care of me. It's a loss not to live smartly. I was wasting my life being involved with this man. I decided to push Kenneth into hell. Probably, your debt-ridden life is over, Kenneth. Soon you'll have to pay for middle school tuition, right? That's about $2,000. Huh? What money? The tuition is payable in installments. I've paid for the first term, but there are still the second and third terms. So, you owe about $4,000 for this academic year. What? I didn't hear about that. I didn't tell you. You ran away, so I couldn't discuss it. You're sneaky. He was too quick to yell. I dropped the final bomb. By the way, I paid the enrollment fee and the first term's tuition with a credit card. I smiled and informed Kenneth. Your credit card. I found the credit card, covered in dust on the shelf. I wasn't sure if he was trying to hit it from himself or just lost it. I hesitated, but when I tried using it, it worked. I thought it was okay since it was his daughter's tuition. I was worried about being blamed for using someone else's card, but luckily he was too ignorant and could only yell. Don't mess with me. Return the money. It's for your daughter's tuition, right? Besides, I'll be expecting the utility bills, tutoring fees, mortgage payments I've been covering. I'll graciously accept the $10,000 from Natalie. It's a very good deal if you include the divorce settlement. What? Of course, that's not okay. Then, I don't want anything to do with you anymore, so please deal with Natalie about the repayment. I cut off Kenneth's words and unilaterally ended the conversation. I quickly headed outside. No, wait, that's not okay. Hey, wait. Kenneth tried to follow me but was stopped at the entrance by a pale-faced Harper. What about my school? Even after forcefully shrugging off Harper, Natalie clung to Kenneth, laughing ominously. I thought she was a cute woman, but suddenly she seemed terrifying. Kenneth, you'll be fine with me. I'll introduce you to a good job. Kenneth screamed, paralyzed. Probably feeling an unknown fear. Wait, wait. Sophia. Don't you care what happens to me? 
Before closing the door, I answered clearly. I don't care. Then I turned to Harper and said with a bit more strength. Harper, you're smart. Use this man as a lesson and live strong. Harper, who had been sobbing, glared at Kenneth with defiant eyes. Wait. I really loved you. Wait. Kenneth's death throes echoed. After that, I immediately filed the divorce papers. Kenneth hadn't contacted me, but he ambushed me at one of the garbage collection sites. I finally found you. I've been waiting for you. Ignoring Kenneth, I silently continued my work. He started talking by himself. Kenneth hadn't managed his money, so he hadn't realized that the forgotten credit card was used, or that there was no money in his account to pay for it. I lost my bank's debit card too. There's no way I would know where it is. Such a foolish excuse wouldn't pass. I'm being hounded for money here and there, but I don't have any. Do something. Kenneth raised his voice but suddenly slumped his shoulders. You're the only woman who can earn money. I thought I'd be okay after breaking up with you because Natalie was earning well. But then she suddenly said she couldn't marry me. That's terrible, right? It's like marriage fraud. It was Kenneth who pretended to be a high earner and deceived people. No woman would want to marry the real Kenneth. Seeing my lack of reaction, Kenneth finally broke down in tears. Help me. Natalie introduced me to a job. They said it's easy to earn money. That can't be right. It must be something dangerous. What's going to happen to me? I'm scared, Sophia. Well, all the garbage is collected. I took a break and looked at Kenneth. Oh, there's garbage here too. But today is only for recyclable garbage, I can't collect useless trash. I'm not trash! Ignoring Kenneth who is worth less than trash, I got into the garbage truck and drove away. Kenneth stubbornly followed me for a while, but one day he disappeared. He's probably engaged in that convenient job. When Kenneth was gone, Harper ambushed me next. Parents and children do the same thing. Hey, you're my mom, right? Please help me. She started crying as soon as she saw me. My dad suddenly disappeared and I'm all alone. I thought she was seeking me out of loneliness, but I was wrong. She was still in middle school and couldn't live independently, so she had to either enter a facility or be taken in by relatives. She refused both options. I'll be taken to relatives in the countryside tomorrow. They're poor. I don't want that. Any slight sympathy I had evaporated. You can study anywhere. Leaving her with just that, I returned to my work. Mom. You're the only mom I have. Mom. Harper cried loudly behind me. But I'm not her mom. I returned to my carefree single life. Look, the garbage collector is here. At one collection site, a little boy waved to me. Holding a miniature garbage truck in his small hands, he watched me work. Cool, huh? Adults may avoid me because they think I'm dirty, but many kids love garbage collectors and they always cheer me up. I used to think marriage was enough, but it's the children with their sparkling eyes who really give me energy. Maybe someday, I'll build a warm, lively family myself. With that thought, I waved back at the children with a smile.